What's up, my comic comrades? Issue three of my comic series, Astonishing Times, just dropped this morning on Comixology and Kindle. For those of you who aren't aware, Astonishing Times is a five issue superhero mystery series that I co-wrote with Frank Barberry and artist Rory Coleman. I just can't believe it's already been three months since the first issue dropped and that we're already over halfway through this first five issue arc. It's been an amazing journey thus far because of all of you. The amount of positive feedback and warm responses have been completely and utterly amazing. I'm so happy and relieved that many of you are liking our series and it's resonating with you. The entire Astonishing Times creative team and all of us here at Variant want to thank you guys for making this such a great launch for the series. But now as far as the story goes, things are starting to hit the fan in issue three with the first full appearance of our powerhouse, Infinite. So if you haven't already, make sure to pick up issue three on Comixology, Kindle, or Amazon. It's available for purchase right now. And in celebration of the release of issue three, we're here to give you all a brief recap of issue two, and then a tease of the first five pages from issue three. At which point you guys can pick up issue three for yourself to see where the rest of the story goes. As I said, we get a lot of Infinite in issue three and some insight into his origin. So with that said, on with the show. Before I get started, I want to let you guys know that we already briefly ran over the first five pages of issue two in our issue one recap of Astonishing Times right here. So today I'm basically going to pick up on page six of issue two. But for those of you who didn't read issue two or watch our video teasing the first five pages of it, here's a very brief rundown of what's going on so you're not confused. Basically, issue two starts off with Noah reading a Koken comic book where we see Koken taking down two thugs in Ella City. And creator fun fact, we named the city Ella City after my second daughter Ella. Essentially, the entire creative team named a lot of things in the comic book after after loved ones or things that are important to them. For me personally, I named several characters and other things after my wife and kids. It makes them part of something I created forever. Plus, I think it'll be cool when my kids are a little bit older and they understand better, I could tell them, hey, I named this character in my comic book after you and thousands of people read it. Isn't that cool? I don't know, I guess it's a little cheesy and a dad thing or something, but I love it. It was important to me. Anyway, the comic then pulls out of the comic that Noah is reading and we see he's reading said comic book in Koken's old lair. Long story short, Koken runs some DNA samples he took from Gold Rush's body at the crime scene in a state-of-the-art database. Koken then finds the body they found is not Gold Rush, and that someone went through quite an ordeal to make it seem as if it was. Telling Noah along with the costume that the body cells were manipulated at a subatomic level. At which point Noah tells Koken, this is huge, a conspiracy involving fake deaths of heroes? They could still be out there. I could see why you brought me in here. Trust me, Koken. I'm a great reporter. I could crack this wide open. But Koken tells him, I'm not interested in a story. I brought you here because I need to ask you about your father. This obviously lets the wind out of Noah's sails. Anyway, this brings us to page six of the issue, where we later see Noah at home in front of his computer. He then looks at a picture of his father with Infinite saying, how did you do it, dad? You lived an amazing life, earned the trust of heroes. How could I ever come close? We then get a close-up of that picture of Noah's dad, Infinite, as well as Gold Rush, and cross out behind him. At this point, Noah's daughter Harper comes up to him saying, daddy, what are you doing? He then responds saying, just thinking, working, dumb grown-up stuff. She then tells him, no daddy, you was kind, you was smart, you was important. After this, his wife Renee comes walking in saying, jury's still out on that one. What are you sulking around in here for? Now, let me pause again real quick because like I said in our last recap video of issue one, Noah's daughter Harper is modeled after my four-year-old daughter Olivia, whose middle name is Harper. And one of the things my wife and I have always told her since she was a baby is, you was kind, you was smart, you was important. And sometimes she says it back to us. My wife actually got it from the movie Help and we thought it was really cute, so we've been saying it to our daughter ever since she was really little. It just kind of stuck. Again, I'm a big sap and I love my kids. I don't know what to tell you. Noah then tells his wife, I'm just upset about work stuff. My story isn't what I thought it was. Renee then tells Noah, honey, I know how hard you tried to escape his shadow. Don't think of it as a competition. Think of it as like you're working with him. Referring to his father, Noah then replies, yeah, that's nice actually. Renee then tells him, he's watching over you and I'm sure he's proud, like we are. She then picks up Harper and says, all right, sweetie, let's leave daddy to his sulking. Hours later, Noah comes out of his office while Harper is down for a nap and talks to his wife saying, I'm sorry I can't tell you more about my article. It's just, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I can she tells him, hush, I know you've got to keep your work confidential and all that, but I believe in you, Noah. So get out there and kick some ass. I know you're a night owl anyway. I'll take care of Harper. Noah then tells her, but seriously, Renee, I don't know what I'd do without you. She then looks at him lovingly saying, I bet you say that to all the girls. Just don't stay out all night, okay? Meanwhile, we see Koken in his lair on his computer doing some investigation, but we see three assassins have broken in and are sneaking up on him. Or so they think, because as one of them is about to bring their sword down on Koken, Koken senses it and blocks the katana with his cybernetic arm. Then while simultaneously blocking the katana with his cybernetic arm, he fires throwing stars out of it that land into another assassin's face. One in his cheek and one in his forehead. Koken then proceeds to roundhouse kick another assassin while the guy with the ninja stars in his face is in agony behind him. Koken then puts the agony to an end by punching one of the throwing stars into the guy's brain, which is one of the most brutal, oh my God, did he just do that moments in the series. I mean, Koken literally punches a protruding throwing star he shot into the guy's face 
into his brain. But let's pause for another creator fun fact, because originally Frank and I, in the script we sent to our artist Ruri, had Koken use one of his weapons to impale one of the assassins or cut off his arm or something like that, if I remember correctly. But when we got our pages back, Ruri was like, hey, for those four panels, I tried something off script that I think worked out really well, which ended up being Koken hammer punching, throwing stars into a dude's head. And it worked out so much better. It's just really violent and also more unique than just stabbing someone or cutting off an arm. It really shows you what kind of dude Koken is. So if I was to give any piece of advice to new comic book writers out there, trust your artists, don't be so locked on what you wrote in the script, because they might have better ideas than you do. Like in this case, Rui's idea was definitely better than the one we originally gave him. Love you, bro. Anyway, with Koken ready making quick work of the first two assassins, the third and final one points a gun at Koken, saying, that's enough, old man, get your hands up in the air, and maybe I'll spare your miserable life. But Koken just looks at him, saying, engage max RPM. The assassin says, what the hell did you just? But before he could finish his sentence, we see Koken voice activated one of his motorcycles to ram the dude in the back. Koken then slowly and confidently then walks towards the guy, saying, did you really think you can get the drop on me here? Koken then grabs the assassin by the face, but he just says, I won't talk, I won't. Koken then just gives him an evil smirk while extending his other hand, saying, oh, you'll talk, trust me. You all do. And on the next panel, the camera moves up with the two of them out of frame as we see whatever Koken is doing to the assassin is making him scream out in pain. The comic then jumps to later that evening to the Sentinel, the newspaper where Noah works. As he's walking in, he says hi to the security guard and thinks to himself about the conversation he had earlier with Koken. He remembers Koken saying to him, your father, he was a trusted ally to many heroes. They fed him intel, secrets. He kept meticulous files. I suspect he kept physical copies of his most important files. I come to you hoping as his next of kin, you have an idea of where he kept such things. And this tells us the reason Koken sought out Noah in the first place. He needs him to help find important files that hold secrets and intel that only Noah will be able to access. Once inside the Sentinel, Noah does an archive search and finds that his dad does have some old files being held in the high security wing of the building, where they keep all the important files and paperwork. But Noah works there, so he's able to sign in after a quick chat with his buddy and security guard, Dave, who watches that wing. Long story short, Noah finds the box his dad put there, grabs it, and says, how the hell am I supposed to get out of here with this? As obviously you're not allowed to check anything out. You could only use the stuff in there to observe or for research. Noah then thinks to himself, I'm sure it'd be easy for Koken to get out of here. He'd probably backflip into an air duct and sneak out. But what is a normal old Noah Sand supposed to do? Wait, the alarm. He then tells himself, okay, just pull it. Then I could sneak out. Yeah, it's a crime, but... And with that, he pulls the alarm and sneaks out saying, I can't believe it. It worked. I committed a misdemeanor, but it worked. As Noah walks out of the Sentinel, he says to himself, oh my god, oh my god, I actually did it. Wait till Koken hears about this, but then we see a mysterious figure from behind him knock him out. On the next page, we see Noah slowly wake up from being unconscious, only to realize he's tied to a chair saying, what the hell is going on? Did someone catch me? Renee, Harper, I can't let them down. A voice then says, don't panic, you're all right. And on the next page, we see it's Koken in his full superhero attire. Koken then tells him, I couldn't wait any longer. They came after me, I had to exfiltrate you. Noah says, exfiltrate me? What are you talking about? Koken tells him, you're in danger. They would have come for you next. We had to get airborne. Noah says, did you say airborne? As we get a wide shot from the inside of Koken's skyplane. Noah looks out the window saying, this is the most incredible day of my life. Where are we going? Koken tells him the old girl has seen better days, but she still soars. I managed to trace our assailants back to a remote location. I have a feeling that the secret to this mystery will be unwrapped when we arrive. Noah then says the file. I dropped it when you grabbed me. Koken replies, don't worry. I recovered the file when I picked you up. You did well. Your father had many valuable notes amongst his belongings, but this is a problem. It looks like one of Trapmaster's designs. A self-destructing safe. Whatever's inside is probably very important. Now let's pause for a second for another creator's note, because the line where Koken says it looks like one of Trapmaster's designs was purposely put there to hint at more characters in this universe. With this one telling us there's a villain or hero called Trapmaster, and whether we see him in this first arc or not, it implies that he exists and we'll see him down the line. It also makes the AT universe feel bigger and fleshed out, which was really important to us. So we just put little lines in there to make readers be like, wait, Trapmaster? I want to see Trapmaster. Little teases of things to come. Anyway, Noah says, I've seen this before, as we get a flashback of Noah's dad showing it to him when he was younger, saying, nothing is more important than keeping the things you care about safe, son. Do you see this box? If someone tries to open it, poof, it'll destroy whatever's inside, unless you know the passcode. You'll always be the most important thing to me, Noah. The day you were born changed my life. At which point Noah says, my birthday. Dad always used my birthday as his passcode. Koken then says, would have been my first guess, honestly. We then see Koken put the passcode in saying, there we go, I'll be damned. As we see a vial inside, Noah says, do you know what this is? Koken then just holds it up saying, it's something I've been looking for for a very long time. The key to power beyond comprehension. And now it's mine, making it kind of unclear what Koken's intentions are. Does he want to use the vial for good or bad? And what the heck is it? And with that, Issue 2 ends. But this brings us to our tease for Issue 3, which came out today. Issue 3 opens up with a flashback of the Cataclysm with Infinite saying, I still hear them. The screams. Save me. Help me. 
After a time, it grows deafening. It weighs a man down, a burden you can never be free of. So many little eyes, so much work, so many that slip through the cracks. As we see Infinite mowing down aliens with his power beams, pink energy that shoots from his eyes. We also get panels of Infinite looking at Noah's father inside of a burning building with fear and sorrow in his eyes. On the next page, Infinite wakes up in present saying to himself, and then quiet. The absence is profound, peaceful, but after a time, it grows eerie. It's not peace, it's unfinished work. He then gets out of bed and goes into the shower where he continues to say, but now I finally see what I should do. I will save them. I will be the hero they need me to be. As he gets dressed, putting on a suit. On the third page, we get an exterior shot of Olympus where Infinite and several other legacy heroes live. It was named after Mount Olympus from Greek mythology. As you may already know, it's where the Greek gods lived and where Zeus's throne resided. Anyway, the real gold rush then tells Infinite, hell of a place you got here. Still soaking it in. I can see the need for secrecy. Can't exactly send a proper invitation and all that, but this mountain air is good for the lungs, for the soul. I always thought we did some of our best work together, Infinite. It was a hell of a thing, the cataclysm, but we did it. We saved them. As we get a flashback of Infinite and Gold Rush working together during the cataclysm, Infinite then tells Gold Rush, no, we haven't saved them, not yet, but we will, please. Walk with me. There's so much I want to show you as we get a wide shot of Olympus. On the next page, we see Infinite continue to talk to Gold Rush, showing him around the property, saying, what we did back then, on the ground, it was a stopgap, a band-aid on an infectious wound. Our work here is about truly fixing the world, solutions to unsolvable problems. Imagine what good we could do with these powers, these gifts, freed from the burden of superheroics. As Infinite shows Gold Rush some of the devices and machines he's been working on, Gold Rush then asks, what exactly are we doing here? Infinite then tells him, imagine an unlimited supply of free, clean energy. Like I said, saving the world, and this time we make it stick. Your speed powers could have so many different applications. Why waste them on punching villains in masks? And on the next panel, we see an alarm going off saying intruder alert, with Gold Rush asking, is this part of the tour? He says, no. He then says, Nero, status report, all sectors. The AI security then tells them an unidentified vessel has entered Olympus airspace. Infinite then says it was bound to happen sooner or later. Scramble the drones, lethal force, as we see drones fly out of Olympus. Infinite continues to say as we get another flashback of him during the cataclysm saying, I won't let them disrupt what I've built. I fought too long, too hard to lose now. Gold Rush then asks, is there anything I could do? Infinite tells them, please return to your quarters for now. We'll continue the tour later after I deal with these uninvited guests. And on the next page, we see these uninvited guests are Noah and Koken. And just like that, that brings our tease of issue three to an end. There we have it guys, our issue three tease, which finally introduces Infinite. This issue is really important to our story as it's where we really start revealing the plot of this book and where things are going with certain characters. We also get backstory on Infinite, like where he came from, what he's about and what his plan is. So if you wanna know where the rest of this issue goes, issue three is available right now for purchase on Comixology, Kindle, or Amazon. The first two issues are also available on all the platforms I just mentioned. So if you haven't read any of the series thus far, you could binge the first three issues right now. And trust me, even if you watch these recaps, you're gonna to wanna to read the story for yourself to get the full effect because there's tons of dialogue character moments and other things you could only experience reading the book for yourself. So myself and the entire creative team hope you check out issue three, which is the top of the roller coaster for us. And then with issues four and five, we start our free fall. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Rant to a close. But if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.